let's go, you guys. Ed Orgeron, that press conference, are you kidding me? He said so much stuff. The quote that has everyone up in arms is what he said about the hiring process of coaches. So if you like this kind of stuff, subscribe. But first, we're going to get to the practice footage that was released from yesterday. And look, we're going to point out some guys that Ed Orgeron says is just absolutely killing it. Mason Smith is someone that he mentioned in the press conference that continues to show up and show out. And there he is getting some good work here with Andre Carter. I'm loving it, Mason. I'm loving it. So this is like just a side note. But, you know, I don't know why coaches do this. And it's everywhere. Coaches, even in the hottest temperatures, long sleeves, shorts, ankle socks. That's the style. <laughs> You're going to see this throughout. And, and we pick up every last little observation. So here's Jordan Tolles in the background with Todd Harris. Durante obviously very involved. I'm loving this baby, getting this defense ready to go. There's B.J. Ojolari right there in front of you. I want you to notice the specialist. Uh, this is for people that aren't familiar with football practices. Specialists work with only themselves. If it's hot, wear short sleeves. Once again, long sleeves and ankle socks. But more importantly, uh, I think that's Dr. Marucci in the back. That's pretty cool stuff. So individual drills, we're going through all of this. Alex Adams right there. Will he get a shot? Here's Jure, who I think is the clear number two. Kayshawn, I was watching that Ole Miss footage earlier. I sometimes do that to get me excited. Another coach, long sleeve, shorts. This is Mickey Joseph, ankle socks. It's the style, baby. It's the style. Trey Palmer getting some work here. And Coy Moore. So, so a few things that Orgeron said in the conference. Uh, he's high on Bug Strong, the linebacker. We'll see him in just a second. Jay Ward might make the move to safety. There's Devonta Lee, who seems to have moved to wide receiver again. Um, so, yeah, I think this is pretty fascinating stuff. Uh, we'll get to some of the other quotes in just a second. Now, this is where it gets fascinating. Ed Orgeron has said this repeatedly in conferences and in interviews that the running back depth is depleted. Now, look, we know Armani Goodwin and Corey Kiner is coming in. Thank goodness there's two of them coming in, two top 10 backs, which is really good stuff. John Emery is wearing a yellow non-contact uniform. You'll see him in a second. Ty Davis-Price got injured in the scrimmage this past weekend. So Corin Norman is first up in drills. And one thing you want to see here, uh, pretty obvious uh, that Jake Pete said, look, I'm going short sleeves. It's too daggum hot. Kev Falk says, I'm long sleeves all day, but I'm wearing pants. Anyway, <laughs> this is pretty interesting. Jake Peets is a former running backs coach with Christian McCaffrey, which, you know, such a big part of McCaffrey's game is catching the ball out of the backfield. And last year, of course, he was a quarterbacks coach with Teddy Bridgewater. Kev Falk, um, we know him from LSU football, but he's one of the greatest third down receiving backs ever. Um, with those early New England Patriot teams. So this is something that LSU's trying to get down packed, throwing the football out of the backfield to running backs. I know some viewers like Christian and Carvis, and a lot of you have mentioned this on our live streams, that we have to get this aspect of our offense down pat. What stinks is that Corin Norman is not going to play next season. And that's no insult to Norman. He's from Lafayette, 337 stand up. But LSU has other options, but they're not there. Goodwin and, Kine, uh, Goodwin and Kiner aren't there yet. You're going to see what LSU did to combat that. This is Josh Williams, who is the most experienced back right now in practice, getting some work in from Garrett Nussmeyer. And you see in the background the offensive line getting some work. We'll get to them in a second. And Here's Josh Williams, 22 carries, 88 yards last season. Had that one crazy juke on the Ole Miss safety. Um, earned a scholarship. Is he good enough to be a lead back in the SEC? Eh, you know, I like his story, but I, I, I don't think that a lot of you would be too happy if he was the number one back next season, which you won't be if everybody is healthy. Now, 
Ed Orgeron has said this repeatedly that Ty Davis Price is not seriously injured. It's just a small injury. And like we said from the get go when talking about spring practice, well, spring practice is spring practice. It's not worth risking too much. So if anyone is just semi injured, like what Eli Ricks says, he's recovering from an injury, they're going to be uber conservative, which is obviously really smart. So here's Norman getting some work in with TJ, Kev Falk, cheering him on. I like that. So this is where it gets really interesting. Ed Orgeron said Derek Davis Jr. is getting some run at running back. And he flirted with this idea in an interview with WWL, uh, not this past week, but the week before, that Derek Davis could be a starting tailback. Now, He is a top 100 prospect for a reason. He is a super athlete out of Pennsylvania. My thing is, I think he's one of the best safeties on the team already, kind of by default because of all the injuries and attrition at that position. You know, he's getting this work in at running back, which is fine. LSU doesn't have a whole lot of running backs. They need someone. Um, First thing is... Do we even know this is Derek Davis Jr.? Yeah, he's wearing number six, which is his jersey number, but Deion Smith also wears number six. I don't think this is Deion Smith. I went and looked at his Instagram. He has a photo of himself at practice. Deion Smith does wear long sleeves, but he doesn't wear a visor or this yellow mouthpiece. So I'm guessing this is Derek Davis Jr. Normally, he'd be wearing a purple uniform because he plays defense, but now he's in a white uniform. If this is Derek Davis Jr., which I do believe so, um, you know, working him in at running back, he is a true freshman. This is obviously an emergency situation, so you can have practice. I I think it's more important, though, for him to stay with the defensive backs and learn safety, especially if you want him to be a starter next season. But once again, it's just one practice. And Ed Orgeron said he asked uh, Derek Davis, if he would be interested in playing running back. I think he's going back to safety. We'll see what happens uh, here. So I I hope Derek Davis uh, goes back to safety because they need him there more than they need him at running back. So in the background, you will get to more offensive alignment. Here's Charles Turner. Here's Jason Hines. And we keep this show on the road. Once again, Josh Williams working these flat routes. And here's John Emery. I like that John Emery is still fighting through the shoulder injury, even though he has yellow non-contact uniform on. He's still practicing. He's still fighting through. And this is some desire. And you want to see this from John Emery. Um, So we'll see. We're all hoping for that breakout season for the former five-star. Here's Jake Pete still getting in that work. Mangus in the background. Hopefully these guys get us back to where we need to be offensively. Last year, we were 86 in the country in points per possession, which obviously isn't that great. Here's Garrett Dellinger and Marcus Dumerville, two guys that are buried pretty deep. Marcus Dumerville coming up on his redshirt freshman year. Garrett Dellinger, of course, a true freshman. I like Dumerville a lot. He just looks like a Division One tackle. And here is Austin Deculus working here with Garrett Dellinger. And in the background, you see the guy that Ed Orgeron is really high on. Anthony Bradford, and we'll get to all of Ed Orgeron's quotes, but Orgeron said Bradford is the guy that is really pushing everything right now. Once again, long sleeves from Blake Baker, shorts and ankle socks. It's hot. I I, I hate getting hot. I have to have short sleeves. I, don't, I, I know it's not a big deal, but still. Uh, Andre Anthony in the background getting some work. So Blake Baker, of course, coaching up his guys. I like that. He said technique was a big issue with the linebacker core. And what you're going to see here is Josh White. Now, Josh White is a guy that Ed Orgeron was high on last season. Class of 2020, a highly ranked, well, not too highly ranked linebacker coming out of Texas in a gold non-contact uniform, which means he's coming off an injury. Um, I know some of you think Josh White, uh, most notably Bruce, one of our commenters, you you really think Josh White could be a starter in the SEC. Once again, only his second year in the program, only played some special teams. They thought he was going to play some linebacker, never saw it. Here's Jared Small from Catholic High, Baton Rouge, Sony Fanua, 
Xavier Carter class of 2021, more of a pass rusher prototype, but getting some work in at linebacker because of the depth. Um, and once again, just going through individual drills right here. Glenn Logan getting some work here with Jaqueline Roy. Good to see Jaqueline. Joseph Evans right here getting some work. It's Jacoby and Guillory. We'll get more Jacobian in a second. And notice here in the background, pass rushers getting work in. There's B.J. Ojolari. And as you can see, this indoor practice facility is huge. Notice all the space <laughs> that is still on the field with all these football players going through different individual drills. This is such a cool freaking facility. I miss being in it. And what's funny, when you're in this facility, you know, they do. They used to do a lot of player interviews in there. There is a buzz. There is a legit buzz in the facility. It's like a... And it's always in the background of the interviews. Um, here's Jaqueline Roy, Mason Smith. So what's interesting is, uh, and I said the same thing about Jordan Tolls, you know, we did a live stream on this very subject. I want you to notice one thing as well. They had this um, Anderson Fiesel field, and notice there's cameras all over the place getting different shots of footage of practice. So, once again, long sleeves, shorts, ankle socks. Well, not really ankle socks. Long sleeves, shorts, ankle socks. I don't know who these guys are. Uh, but still... If you're Jaqueline Roy and you hear Coach Orgeron say Mason Smith from the class of 2021 is the guy that could push for starters minutes, well, guess what? If I'm Jaqueline Roy, if I'm Jacoby and Guillory, if I'm Eric Taylor or whoever, I take that to heart. And what's funny is because um, seniors are allowed to come back, we did a video on the tweeners. And the class of 2020 is kind of a tweener class. Because so many seniors were allowed to come back for an extra season, they're going to retain their starter spots, especially with what Ed Orgeron said, which we'll get to in just a moment. And then you have this ridiculous class of 2021 coming in that's also very talented. Well, normally, if those seniors leave, you're automatically stepping up into those starter spots. But because Glenn Logan and Neil Farrell have an extra year of eligibility because all those offensive linemen that are seniors are allowed to come back. You're going to have to really work. The Jaqueline the, the Roy's, the, Jaco uh, the Marcus Doomervilles, you're going to have to really work to see the field because here's Jacoby and Guillory, another one of those guys. Here's Ed Orgeron coaching up uh, the defensive tackles. You're really going to have to work uh, to, to find your way to get some snaps. Joseph Evans, another one of those guys. Not from the class of 2020, but still. Out of Haynesville, they moved him to offensive line and now back to defensive line, uh, dating back to last season. So, of course, it's good. Coach Orgeron said in the press conference that he's going to be more hands-on with the defense, coaching up the defensive tackles, arguably one of the best defensive tackle coaches of all time. Um, I want you to notice this drill. Obviously, you're looking at one of the best LSU football players ever, and uh, Derek Stingley, big year for him coming up. And I want you to watch this drill again. This is something that Durante probably saw in film and wants to really work on. And here's uh, Corey Raymond working on this individual drill with Derek Stingley Jr. So what they're going to do is last season, what wide receivers and offensive play callers would do is they would pick on Stingley and Flott because they weren't good at passing off routes. So they would twist uh, the two receivers and the because Flott and Stingley didn't communicate well and because the defensive game plan was so simple, they struggled passing off a route. And what passing off a route is, is essentially, now once again, I'm not Eric Crocker, I'm not a legendary defensive back coach, I never played the position, but what this drill is doing is working on passing off a route. So here's Dwight McLaughlin, who's playing wide receiver here. And what you're, what Stingley's doing is he's passing McLaughlin off because he's going inside, and he's picking up Darren Evans going deep. And that's essentially what this drill is working on. And that's good. 
LSU is identifying a problem, and this could be a drill that they even did last season, but this is something they're going to have to work on. Passing off routes, stopping the explosive plays. Ed Orgeron uh, said that the explosive plays in this last scrimmage went down uh, compared to the scrimmage that they did before, the practice that they did before, which is good. Here's Durante getting some work in with Todd Harris. Look at Todd. Look at those biceps. I'm proud of you, Todd, fighting through the injuries. Came in that 2017 class with um, Grant Delpit and uh, Jacoby Stevens, and he's finally getting his chance to start. Here's your uh, potential starter, Max Johnson, getting some work. Stepping up in the pocket, throwing a dart to Jure. Almost got hit by Mickey. And then, obviously, Mangus, the $400,000 man, coming in to work with Devonta Lee there. Really good stuff here. I like this. Long sleeve shorts, you know it. <laughs> Let's go, Miles. Give me a good dart. Trey Palmer over the middle. So really quickly, let's go through a few quotes here. Ed Orgeron mentioning that he needs to be more careful with what he says to the media. And yes, uh, that's pretty good. What he said about Bo Pelini's defense before they ever even played a game, while at the same time kind of sort of insulting Dave Veranda is crazy. Uh, it, I said it was crazy at the time. It was certainly crazy. And look... Um, Eventually, it was Ed Orgeron going to Dave Aranda, asking for his advice, and that's how we got Durante Jones. So, you guys know how I feel about Dave Aranda. I love that guy. I love what he did at LSU. But we have all moved on. Uh, Dave Aranda says he's moved on, and that's that. Uh, You know, this is crazy. Ed Orgeron says he's challenging the offensive line. Not too crazy, but hear me out. Ed Orgeron says he's challenging the offensive line to be able to achieve five-man protection with no tight ends, no running backs helping. It's what they did often in 2019. Full disclosure, I did listen to the entire press conference. Um, Ed Orgeron also says he's sticking with Cordell Flott in the slot. Uh, We'll save that for another video. Let's just focus on the offensive line. Um, Look, anything could change from now until spring. So all spots are open, but Ed Orgeron was very... Uh, forthright over what he thinks the roster is going to look like in yesterday's press conference. And this is, you know, pretty wild that LSU, based on what they showed on film, and all our film studies showed this, they simply could not block with just five guys last season. They were so bad at picking up any type of exotic bliss, uh, bliss, blitz, twist, stunt, or whatever. You could watch any of our film studies, and you're going to see that very thing. We did a specific one on a play in the red zone not too long ago. And if Miles Brennan is your quarterback and you can't block with five-man protection, you're going to have to keep a running back in to personal protect or have a tight end stay in more often. So I like that Ed Orgeron's challenging them, but can they do it is a different thing. So we'll see what happens. We've done an all, a lot of offensive line content uh, this week. And then he said, Anthony Bradford is the one who's been pushing the starters the most lately, but someone's going to have to really shine in order to break through the starters returning from last year's offensive line. Now, you got, uh, those that are diehard fans of the channel, you know how I feel specifically about certain offensive linemen. I don't want to sound like I'm being so critical. I've said this a thousand times. I hate criticizing. I want every player to succeed, okay? So I'm not going to get into any of the individual offensive alignment, but sticking with that same group into next season, unless there is some type of drastic improvement, I just don't agree with that. I think there are other options. Maybe Anthony Bradford does come in and win the starter's job uh, from a Chase and Hines or someone like that, but... Man, I, I, I am concerned, but this is a big year for James Craig and that group. Now, uh, I don't want to get into this quote too much. Uh, Ed Orgeron says, if I don't see something I like, we're not doing it. Um, you know, he should have stepped in more with Bo Pelini. They were so bad last season. But at the same time, I do hope he lets Durante Jones do his thing. And here's Ed Orgeron. I love Ed Orgeron backing his coordinators publicly. This does so much for Durante Jones, and he has done the same for Jake Peets and DJ Mangus. This is big for them. They've worked their whole lives to be a power five play caller or an NFL play caller. 
And this is as high a level as you can get at the college game. So the fact that Ed Orgeron backs these guys up like that is pretty daggum good. Now, here's a quote that, you know, um, it's making its rounds in the national media and, you know, amongst the fan base, saying that he didn't interview the hires that they made last season. Now, is he talking about Scott Linehan, Bo Pelini, or both? I don't know. Now, if you want to get deep philosophically into hiring candidates, we can. Malcolm Gladwell did a podcast on this very thing on revisionist history. Some studies say it's better to not interview candidates uh, before you hire them. But I I disagree with that when it comes to football because cohesion really does matter. Being around people that you like to be around is very important. And we're not getting too deep philosophically here that it was wild that not only LSU hired Bo Pelini, they forked over $2.3 million to get him. They gave Scott Linehan $800,000. Why? No one was going after those guys. LSU has a leverage. They're the ones with the jobs. You don't need to just fork over that much money. Even if Bo Pelini was great, you could have got him for one point five, one point six, or whatever. That was horrible from Ed Orgeron, Scott Woodward, and everyone involved. And look, People are pointing out that this is what ineptitude looks like, and they have a point. Now, I do think it is overblown because I like a coach that's honest, and Ed Orgeron is being honest here. He is admitting a mistake, and he's moving on from it. And, of course, as you know, he did interview each and every candidate that he ended up hiring. So he made a mistake, he publicly admitted it, and we moved on. So, yes, it does deserve to be pointed out. But at the same time, I don't think it's as big of a deal as people are making it out to be. Boom! I hope you enjoyed this video today. It was a little bit longer, but as you saw, there was a lot we had to get to. It is Power Hour LSU. Boom! Parmesan salmon tonight. Let's go! Uh Garlic parmy.